What's up, gamers? The Expo's back at it again today. Uh, there's a bunch of topics I wanted to talk about, but I don't feel like I had enough. I can't, like, for example, the ban list. I want to give my thoughts on the ban list. I want to give my thoughts on, like, the new heroes. I want to give my thoughts on, like, uh, maybe the underpowered uh, level that Fab is going. And I've heard a lot of rhetoric, like, in person and online about this. I want to give my thoughts on them not posting deck lists for every battle hard. And there's a bunch of topics I want to talk about. But I just, I, I just don't have it in me to do a 10-minute yap session about, you know, any of these one topics. I don't have it in, in me to do a 10, 20, 30-minute yap session about uh, just Betsy, right? I can't do it. Uh, so I want to kind of wrap everything up into just one concise video and uh, hit the points a lot quicker um, than I could doing them one video at a time. So... I don't know what to call this. It'll be some kind of like a news roundup type thing, I guess. Uh, yeah, so let's just go ahead and jump straight into it. Let's start with the ban list. The ban list uh, didn't affect anything really but living legend format. And then like there's all this discord online, all this discord on Twitter about like, oh, they should have done this. They should have done this. They should have done this. And I don't even think anyone plays living legend format. And that's all the ban list target was living legend format, right? I don't even... I don't even think anyone cares or plays this stuff. I, I do think it's a, it will be an interesting format one day, but right now it's it's very uninteresting. So I ran a poll on, on my page with all of you guys. Thank you for everyone who participated in it. And only 7% of people say they have ever played a Living Legend game. And uh, yeah, so it turns out my suspicions were right. No one really plays this, right? Uh, but for the people that do, I still want to give a take, right? So I'm so entrenched in fab, right? I think about every format and i play everything like it's kind of kind of part of the gig you know what i mean but um you know people say like oh well channel lake frigid got hit so icelander can't win now or you know uh what was it starstruck got hit so bravo can't win it's actually quite the opposite because all those cards got hit i think uh you know a hero like icelander actually can win now <laughs> because you know if you didn't hit all these cards then icelander could never win right because starvo would just run her over game after game after game after game same with bravo or same with oldham anything like this uh so because they hit all of these cards you know starvo losing 30 cards isn't as bad as icelander losing you know four cards or however many she lost so i think in a roundabout weird way it was actually a buff to the heroes like Icelander and Bravo, things like that. I'm sure the format is a lot better than before the bans, despite all of the crying and moaning on Twitter. Uh, so yeah, I'm actually kind of excited to see what that Living Legend metagame looks like, and I would be interested to in jumping in and playing myself. Uh, the new heroes, what do we have? Betsy and Olympus, I think his name is. I hope I'm getting that right. Uh, both of them look pretty sick. Betsy kind of is just a bravo like her hero power is just so similar i get there's some nuances right overpower could be better than dominate in certain situations and betsy's hero power could also affect weapons that could be interesting if her weapon like is like a hammer that hits for six that naturally wagers or something like that being able to give that uh overpower would be kind of kind of an interesting space for her uh, and at first I was kind of like a little bit frustrated that she was so similar to Bravo. I kind of wanted something more fresh and more new. But uh, I think she's fresh and new enough to be interesting. And I also like that she's so the same the more I think about it. Because if you, if you leave Fab for two, three years and you came back and you just wanted like some sense of familiarity, you know, some place to start, it's nice to know that your class if that's Guardian, isn't going to change too, too much, right? And if my class was Runeblade, it hasn't changed too, too much, right? You know, maybe I played two, three years ago, and uh, Briar was my main squeeze. I come back. I guess you couldn't have played three years ago, but you guys know what I mean. If I played one or two years ago, and Briar was your thing, you came back. Viscerai is not entirely different from that. Uh, so I do like the stability of the classes and how uh, it's not going to be you're not going to be totally out of your comfort zone if you leave and come back. Even if you're coming back to the same class, I think you should have a similar play experience. So I actually do kind of like that she's a, she's a little bit the same. I hope that the other Guardian is uh, pretty different from the other Guardians we've seen. I would like to see some design space made in those classes. But overall, yeah, Betsy, super cool. Olympus, I think, just judging off the way the cards are worded here, let me pull them up really quick so I can read them word for word, bar for bar. All right, so for the new warrior attack reaction, it's if you've played, play this if you've wagered this chain link, 
target attack gets plus three. Uh, I think this is interesting. Hold on, let's actually read the other one just to kind of get a full visual of what's going on here. Uh, the Olympia specialization up the ante uh, also says like X or choose X plus one target attack wagers with an agility, a goal, a vigor target attack gets plus Y where Y is the number of whatever, whatever. The text after that isn't too relevant to what I'm about to say. And I think it's that uh, they're kind of leaning more into just regular attack actions in Warrior, whereas before every card, like every Warrior card, look up, you know, 99% of them, they all say target weapon attack or target sword attack or target, you know, dagger or whatever. They say that kind of stuff. So I do like the, uh, the design space they're going in, you know, just target attack. So that kind of implies maybe... You know, if we look at Olympus's picture, he's got the dual wielding swords. Maybe it'll be like sword, sword, snatch. Like maybe that'll be a normal play pattern for Olympus. Granted, you, it would be like a snatch that wagers or something. I don't know. Uh, you, got, you guys know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I just, I like to see the attack actions weaved in. I think this was a big part of why I never found Warrior to be too interesting of a class before. And that's just because they were just so one dimensional in that they're only attacking with their weapon. Sure, they could do attack reactions on top of that or whatever. Um, but as I'm sure you guys have noticed in my deck techs and things like that, I always like the decks that could play on multiple axes, right? I like the Icelander, uh, you know, you could play Frost Tex or the Channel Late Game Plan. I like Usuri, the way I built her, check her out, uh, check out my deck tech on her, my mastery guide, whatever. The way I built her was like, you could play her very aggressively in Redline, or you could play her in a Fatigue style, right? I'm currently playing Max, uh, not the best hero, but <laughs> he, he has that similar... Similar flavor of play in that you could build a mech or you could boost your opponent down. I'll probably make a deck tech on that one soon. I'll probably make a full guide on it. Having a lot of fun with Max. Again, not the strongest hero ever, but uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, maybe he's just a couple cards away from being broken or maybe he's just a couple heroes rotating away from having his time in the sun. So I'm just kind of getting ready for that. But yeah, I have a vibe. I have a feeling that that's the direction they're going with the Warriors. So I like it a lot. Uh, Raise an army uh, for the Kasai specialization. I've, I haven't talked about it. I know it's not like a brand new spoiler or anything, but I think that's sick. <laughs> I think that they're giving Warrior more like axes to play, more of a wider a wider scope of support. So I love to see it. And then, I mean, not only that, but Olympus just looks sick. He's got like that Spartacus vibe to him. Uh, exactly what I'm looking for in a hero. So I'm excited to see the rest of the cards spoiled for him. And I uh, can't wait to play him. And uh, yeah, Betsy, Betsy's also somewhat interesting to me. Next thing I want to talk about is the channel memberships. So as you guys know, I have a Patreon right now. And unfortunately, I'll post a link to Patreon. Like my whole main selling point is you get early access to the market watches. And this is because bad actors, people just buy out the cards I talk about. And so my fans, when they look at the video, even if it's just an hour old or even brand new, and most of the time not brand new, but like an hour, two hours old, a lot of the cards or all of the cards I talk about are, so are sold out. So I thought that that was a good selling point for the Patreon, and I still think it is. The problem with Patreon is that I'll start posting these market watches to the Patreon, and I'll have the market watches set to private on YouTube. So you could only view it if you have that link. And my idea was I'll post the link on Patreon, and my Patreons will click the link, and then, you know. Unfortunately, I keep posting my market watches to my Patreon, and I think I have like 20 patrons or something. Shout out to all of you guys. I love you guys. But um, the video will have like 50 views, 100 views, something like that before I make it go live. So I'm pretty sure like even the unique views, it's, it's, it's kind of looking like people are sharing that link a lot. Um, so it kind of made me self-reflect like, why is this happening? I think it's happening because uh, I'm probably just charging too much, right? People just don't want to pay that much for for my patron to get access to those early market watches. They're still watching the market watches early, so they probably still enjoy the content. And if that's the case, let's kind of kill two birds, one stone here. Let's shut down the uh, patron sharing. So if you guys are on the Patreon, I'm going to be sending everyone a message here shortly and telling you guys to uh, migrate over to channel memberships on my YouTube channel, if we can, it's only $3 a month as opposed to the Patreon was five. To the people who still want to support me on Patreon, that's awesome. There's a $10 tier on Patreon as well. To the people that support me on there, those will probably be the first people that get my next wave of like good deeds don't go unnoticed type of promo. You know, when they send out these stacks of promos for content creators, those will be the top people of my list. Um, so yeah, migrating to channel memberships, decreasing the monetary 
barrier to entry for that I'm hoping is going to reduce some of the pirating, I guess you could call it, some of the leaking of it. I guess people could still screen record it and post it somewhere, but this is just like another hoop to jump through. Uh, so yeah, channel membership, smash the channel membership button, help me out, I would very much appreciate it. Another thing I wanna talk about is like, LSS just doesn't post the deck lists for a lot of these battle hardens. We had one, uh, the one that Kano took down, I'm sorry, I don't remember where it was. I wanna say it was like Orlando or something. We never got deck lists. I'm trying to do more consistent content for you guys. And I think one of the forms of video that you guys seem to like and that I seem to enjoy making is the meta analysis videos where I go over the top eight deck lists and I talk about what makes them different, uh, you know, what makes the actual deck different, right? If you've seen like six Bravos topped, you wouldn't think too much of it, but I want to dive into those six Bravo decks. Is anything different about them? Is it just a regular Bravo deck, whatever? Yeah, the, the videos have been doing pretty well. I think you guys like them and I want to keep making them. I want to make them like a staple part of my content and it's very tough to do that <laughs> when LSS doesn't post the deck list. So I don't know if it's on LSS, like I could be attributing the wrong blame here. Maybe the tournament organizer never sent LSS the deck list, so LSS never posted the deck list because they didn't have them, right? That would make sense. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that that could get mitigated. I hope someone from LSS sees this and maybe can address the issue. Uh, because there was some interesting stuff there, like Redline Uzuri did very well there. I want to see that Redline Uzuri deck. How much go again did it have? Uh, I kind of want to break down like the nitty gritty details of it. I could watch the stream and kind of get a generic flavor for what it was doing. Uh, but I really want to give more in-depth content to the viewers. Uh, but yeah, that's the kind of content I'm looking to make moving forward. I'm sure you guys have already noticed that. Yeah, it just kind of sucks that they... They pick and choose, it seems like, which uh, which deck list to post. And uh, I've seen a couple people complaining about Fab 2.0, how underpowered Fab is. I know you guys are rolling your eyes. I am too. This is like the dumbest argument ever, right? You'll see people quit the game or whatever because Fab just ain't what it used to be. Fab just ain't what it used to be. I can't, I can't pay $1,000 anymore and buy a broken Starvo deck and stomp my local fab dads anymore yeah sorry <laughs> i think that this is a kind of a lame lame excuse lame cope to complain about fab like you're complaining that the the meta is too balanced i guess you could say i personally like it you know if there's just like yeah like i said like a fab dad a very casual gamer who brings like you know a, a, maybe a more underpowered hero like a riptide or a bolton or something like that to locals uh, i'm glad that he has a chance to win right and if if you look across the board how many people this affects, I'm sure there's more casual Fab Dad gamers than there is these hyper competitive people who are complaining about, you know, not having a tier zero deck anymore. So I'm not really trying to hear those complaints too, too much. I actually kind of like the direction that Flesh and Blood is going. I think we're in a fantastic metagame right now. One of the best metagames I've ever seen, probably the best metagame I've ever seen maybe in any card game right now uh just the fact that any hero could take it at any time is kind of interesting <laughs> i guess the complaint on the current meta is that right you don't know what to <laughs> you don't know what to side for you have to know every deck your opponent like could possibly bring makes it a little bit interesting but yeah that that's part of what makes it so good but yeah it's just a bunch of stuff i wanted to get off my chest a bunch of stuff i wanted to share with you guys i wanted to also put like a box opening video but every box I open is just like nothing, right? And then, so I won a, win a box tournament the other day. And, uh, you know, I was like, my boxes just suck. I'm not going to open one, this one on camera. You guys already know where the story is going. Of course, I just pulled like banger after banger after banger. It's a Dust Till Dawn box. And uh, I pulled like a Marvel Angel, uh, Courage of Blade Hold, or, or Iron Song Versus, whatever the Warrior Gloves are. And then... Uh, what else did I pull? Oh, yeah, and a Warmongers or something. It was just the best box ever. Uh, and, of course, it wasn't on camera. You guys probably seen that, that uh, the ending of that story coming ahead of time. Another question I've been getting, uh, just like once, actually. I still want to address it, though, is why I don't wear my Santa hat in all my videos. If you guys remember, for the OG Day 1 fans, last December, I had just started my channel, so probably not a lot of you guys are OGs. I had like 100 views of video, but uh, I wore a Santa hat every day in December, every day. <laughs> it was like part of the gig, and I wanted to do it again this year, and I probably should have. So I bought a Santa hat. A big issue with this Santa hat, though. I got it from Target, so don't get mad at me. Get mad at Target. Look at this. I couldn't do it. 
<laughs> it just looks so goofy. So yeah, maybe I should have went back and found a, a higher quality one, a better one. I wanted it to like fall like that, but uh, no, this thing is excited to say the least. But yeah, thanks for sticking around this long. Uh, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you for sticking around this long. Don't forget to like, comment, rate, subscribe, and hit that channel membership button, boys. Later, gamers.